The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, a little tape delay here, but this is Billy Ray Valentine speaking to you through TFNN. And, folks, we just had the alarm go off. I posted the chart. We've been waiting for this for three and a half weeks, and we hit the 382 in the gold today at 1769. So we bought it at seventeen sixty nine, and you're only going to risk three dollars on that puppy, because if she goes to seventeen sixty six, got to stand aside. And maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But by golly, we've been waiting a long time for it. So this is what we've been doing: cover the short, and went long at night seventeen sixty nine. Frankly, it doesn't make any difference whether it works or not, folks. It's a question of these these patterns are based on. Uh, probabilities. Remember yesterday, let's just go through the one yesterday because that was a very important one. And the reason why is you've got to get up there. I've got uh, Tim Bostas, our guest today, he's got some great stuff. So here's the one yesterday. We were right at the 382 into Fed time. And of course, the market exploded and went all the way up uh, to this area here, uh, right up near the 78% level. And then, of course, uh, dropped and then and, and continued to make. Uh, new lows but that's that's you have to do those folks you don't know which ones are going to work one of the questions that I received overnight is have I ever gotten any inside information and the answer to that is unequivocally no and I'm telling you I'm looking at every year that I've traded going back to 1959 when I did my first trade I can never remember I, I know I've never gotten an inside information that worked. I mean, I've I've heard some people give me some tips, and 99% of those never work. So you can do the work yourself. That's basically it. The closest I ever got to inside information, the fact is I called Twentyman today to see if he remembered. This was back in 1978. We were at Drexel, and uh, in the mornings when we got there, you had to be, if you were a stockbroker, you had to be there by 6 o'clock because the market opened at 6.30, so you had to be there at 6. I was there at 5. 20 men came in around 6. And the, the Milken people, um, Jimmy was living with Margot Grant, who ran the catering service for uh, Milken, and they would prepare breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the Milken people. And what we would, what she would do every morning is she would prepare. We had 22 brokers in our office plus a, another 20, another 15 or so staff. And so she would prepare some really nice little uh, croissants and bagels and stuff every morning for us and some fresh fruit. Nothing like what they had. Heck, they had Eggs Benedict and the whole, whole nine yards. But we would get the leftovers and she would prepare it just absolutely gorgeous. So it would be already by 6.30 when they had the meeting for the stock market boys. And uh, on that meeting day, I remember they said that they raised the margin on a stock called Resorts International. It was a gambling stock. And they raised it to, to, to trade the stock. You had to put up 300% margin. And I asked my manager, I said, Bob, how come it's 300%? He says, well, we don't want these people involved in it. And, uh, you know, I said, how about if I wanted to short it? And he said, well, you can do whatever you want. He said, but you'd be throwing money away. This thing's going to go straight up. So I asked Twentyman to stop by the Conti office uh, there in the West Westwood, which was about 10 minutes away from where our office was. And I said, pick up a chart at ADP. Well, Conti had an ADP machine that actually printed out intraday charts. You could get five days of an intraday chart. It was $5 per chart. So I asked him to pick me a chart on Resorts International and bring it to the office. And so he gets in about 7 o'clock, and there was the chart. Perfect three drive to a top pattern. Oh, couldn't have been any more beautiful. So I told Bob, I said, Bob, I'm going to sell 100 shares of a Resorts International. It was selling for about 90. And uh, he said, well, you're going to be throwing money away. He said, you really shouldn't do it. I said, you really feel that strongly about it? And he said, yeah. I said, let's sell 200. And he laughed and he said, you know, knowing you, he said, you must see something. He said, so I'm going to sell 100 myself. And I said, okay, Bob, we're risking five bucks. Can you risk $500? He said, absolutely. So he put the three drive pattern on and it dropped 50% in two days. 
and uh, drop, I think it went from 90-something down to 46 or something. It was just straight down. And uh, that was a case where they just everybody was on one side of the market and they, you know, was going straight up, and that was basically short covering. And, but I've never, ever gotten a tip where somebody said, you know, buy this, it's going to go here, buy it, this, it's going to go there. I watch CNBC occasionally and, and Bloomberg, and they do give you some ideas, but by golly, you know, you got to do your work yourself. That's basically it. That's, that's, that's basically the bottom line. And the fact is, today I was hoping to get on uh, the regular time. We, we missed a couple of really good ones here that I wanted to run by you. Uh, one was, we, was sent in to us by uh, Mr. JV over there in Texas, and it was about the Russell. And I wanted to show it to you because it's a beautiful chart. Uh, intraday on the Russell, and we're going to show you the one on the yes, uh, the Dow Jones too, because we had the same thing happening in the Dow Jones, and we also had it happening in the E Mini S and P. But we'll do these two, so you'll see it. There's the Russell. You can see the perfect A B C D. Now we, you know, we've crashed down through here now, so we're heading down towards that target. It looks like that's in the Russell. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the one that we had for the uh, Dow Jones. This happened, uh, oh, about an hour or so ago, and we'll get it up so you can see it also. Now, this is, uh, you know, these are ones that worked. I mean, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But when they do, and when they do, you can see here we went all the way down. We've made new lows uh, substantially here, heading lower here in that. So those are the ones, you know, that we were watching for today. Now, there's another one that I, I think it's really important to look at, folks, here. And that is, I want to show it to you, and that is the natural gas today, because this is one wild puppy. Let me give you an indication why. Here is natural gas. It's on an eight-minute chart, I believe. You can see here, there's the 3.8, your 61% retracement right here. There's your 61% retracement. You see it went through the 3.82, 50%, it hit the 61% retracement, and then broke all the way down to here. And then look what happened when the report came out. It went all the way up here, and then down. Folks, this is a $9,000 move here in a matter of an hour and a half. And that was with a bullish report. Hello, operator. I mean, what are they trying to tell you here? My goodness. And let's take a look at it just a little bit uh, more um, closely, because here's what I was watching. I didn't get this trade off because I saw it just a tiny bit too late, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because this is what I do, is I, I watch these markets that move really quickly, and if you're watching 15-minute and stuff, you don't have to watch everything. Watch the things that are, you know, uh, you know, like what it said uh, in, in, what, in the, uh, what was that, uh, Willie, Willie Lomax, uh, you know, go to, go, if you want to rob banks, the reason why I rob banks is because that's where the money was. Look, there's your 1.618 expansion right up there at the top. The market breaks down, bada bing, bada boom, 382, and then $6,000 straight down, folks. I mean, this is huge moves with a margin of around 3,600. That, that's really great stuff. Now, we've got a break coming up, and then we're going to have our man from Financial Cycles Weekly, Tim Bost. He's got some great charts. Going to talk to us about Bitcoin and the whole nine yards, and he's been on fire, as they say. El Fuego, El Fuego. That's Mr. Bost himself. So we'll be back with Tim Bost at our break here. And if you have any questions, 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, without further ado, we have something for you. Mr. Tim Buss, Financial Cycles Weekly, is in the house. Tim, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, my friend. How about you? Well, you're sounding like you're right next door here. Uh, well, that's pretty good. Listen, you've got a lot of things to share with us today, so why don't you take over the mic and show us what you're looking at? All right, so let's take a look here because we do have some action coming up. Let's see if we can get these slides to work. Uh, the, um, the big thing on the horizon is coming up next Wednesday. We've got uh, Uranus Retrograde Station. Uranus is our friend way out in the solar system here. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be turning retrograde on August the 24th, uh, and it will be at 18, almost 19 degrees of Taurus when it does so. Uh, Uranus spends a lot of time each year in retrograde motion, about five months out of the year. When we talk about something like Mercury retrograde, you know, it's a little bit of a, a hassle, but we get to deal with it for about three weeks each time. Uh, Uranus uh, is uh, uh, you know, much longer duration, uh, in fact, it will be uh, toward the end of January before it goes back direct on January the 23rd. And as you can see, it will back up to about 14, uh, almost 15 degrees of Taurus. So during the next five months, it will be moving backwards and only traveling about four degrees of uh, celestial lo uh, longitude in, in, the, in the process there. So it's some, something we want to be aware of. And the important thing here with Uranus uh, is the stations themselves. In other words, we're not so worried about what's going to happen while Uranus is retrograde. We are concerned about the beginning and end points of that uh, next Wednesday and then again in late uh, January are the high tension times. Uranus itself is all about surprises, explosions, uh, breakthroughs, innovations, revolutions, all kinds of strange stuff that happens uh, uh, rapidly, suddenly, unexpectedly. And the important point here is that Uranus stations tend to have a big impact on moving markets. Again, when it combines with other planets, we can get the distinctive action from it. But we always want to pay attention to the stations uh, to see what happened, of course. Uh, uh, this is kind of the Johnny-come-lately, one of them, <laughs> in the astrology. Astrology has been around for 5,000 years or so that we know about. Uh, and this was discovered by William Herschel uh, back in uh, 1781, a British astrolog astronomer. Uh, and, and it actually had been cited uh, since the late 1600s, the time when uh, you know, Galileo was do doing his stuff about 100 years before that, and uh, uh, everybody was looking at telescopes. And so 
uh, they had saw, uh, uh, spotted it before but didn't understand it was a planet. Uh, they, did, they thought it was a new star, uh, and then it was Herschel who discovered this actually a planet. Uh, so it has an orbital period of about 84 years. Uh, it's a slower moving dynamic, but we pay a lot of attention to its impact in the markets. So what we want to do today is look a, a little bit of back testing for some key markets and see what the retrograde station uh, effect has been uh, over time. So as we do these back testing dynamics, what we're doing is looking here uh, at uh, charts uh, for the individual markets. Of course, we like to look here as well at the 90 degree dial uh, with the retrograde station coming up on Wednesday. It activates a couple of midpoints uh, that speak to the socioeconomic dynamics and some of the, uh, the geopolitics and things of that sort that can have a kind of a background impact on the markets. We want to be conscious of that as well. Uh, for, for the uh, New York uh, time zone, it activates the Neptune ascendant midpoint, uh, which is all about rampant fraud, big lies, uh, very explosive events. Uh, they're typically triggered by public deception. People get uh, misconceptions about what's going on and take uh, all kinds of drastic action. So it's a very, very volatile environment that we're moving into here. Uh, but by the same token, we also have uh, two trans-Neptunians uh, getting together, Apollon and Admetos. Apollon uh, is all about expansion. Admetos is about contraction. It's kind of a, a, a super Jupiter, super Saturn combination here. And so what happens is if we grow and grow and grow and expand and expand, suddenly we get too full. And so uh, Amitos kind of puts the cork in the bottle, so to speak, and it's a state of becoming uh, very, very satisfied, completely content. And that surprises everybody when people uh, say, okay, we've had enough of whatever uh, the thing is that we're experiencing. So we'll see how all that works out. We're more concerned with the individual markets, of course, with the S&P. What we typically see is for... Uh, about a month prior to uh, the retrograde station uh, with uh, Uranus, uh, we have a generally upward trend, and then about a week ahead of time, right around now, uh, we begin to uh, go into a period of congestion that lasts until about two weeks uh, after the retrograde station, and then we get to a resumption of a bullish bias, uh, but with, uh, without quite so much momentum involved. So. Uh, this is definitely uh, an indication of a, a congested period uh, in, in the S&P. Uh, we still have that bullish bias in place, uh, but it's hard fought for, let's put it that way. Uh, it's it's not, not a slam dunk rally that we're looking at uh, as, a, as a result of this particular uh, configuration here. Uh, so we do want to keep that in, in, in mind. So what we do here, now, as we look at this chart, what we're seeing in the middle of it is that zero point. And that zero point is the date of the retrograde station. So we've gone back through the entire history of the S&P 500, uh, checked out what the market has done every time in the past that there's been a Uranus retrograde station. And then uh, averaged out the market performance 30 days before, 30 days after uh, the dates of those stations so that we get a, a broader perspective on what actually happens uh, with the markets. And we'll share a couple of other charts that have this same formulation. What we want to understand here is that zero point is the date of the station. To the left, we got 30 days prior to it. And to the right, 30 days afterwards. On average, this has been the performance of the S&P. Uh, so, we, you know, remind everybody that past performance doesn't guarantee future results, but this is what the past performance actually looks like. Uh, so that's one of the things we like to do. And then we can kind of check this whole dynamic out and come up with very, very precise uh, uh, forecasts for the probability of higher prices. And on that basis, we try to optimize our trading dynamics. Here's what we come up with uh, for the S&P based on this particular Uranus retrograde station. Again, doing this research, uh, we kind of try to fine tune it as best we can. And it looks good here if we are planning to buy the day after the station on Thursday, uh, the 25th uh, of August. Uh, so we have a, a good entry point there, we believe. And then uh, holding that position and, and uh, closing it out on Wednesday, the 14th of September. So it's a, a bit of a swing trade here. Uh, this has an exactly a two-thirds probability of being a winning trade, 66.7% likelihood of coming out ahead. Now, in my book, that's a little bit iffy there. I like to get a little higher uh, probability for myself, but you may be comfortable with that. That's an individual uh, 
uh, point of, of, of discretion, uh, but uh, you know, we want you to be aware that this is what our back testing shows. This is about the best we're going to get with this for a tradable setup with the S&P over the next few weeks based on uh, this particular research. So a 66.7% probability of the trade uh, being a, a positive uh, outcome here on the long side. Our expected ROI is a little over one half of 1% uh, during that time frame. Uh, so in a very congested market, that can look pretty respectable. Uh, but if you've got uh, higher sites, then you might want to look elsewhere. So that's our outlook here for the S&P. We can use this exact same technique, studying the past price history uh, you know, of uh, anything that we want to trade, uh, comparing that then to the times when there have been uh, the retrograde stations by Uranus and come up with the same kind of, of, of strategy here. Okay. Got to play a few bills, Tim. Could you stay with us for another segment? I would be delighted to. Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly, folks. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. You want to continue, young man? Uh, we were just looking here at the uh, performance for the S&P 
around the time of retrograde stations uh, by the planet uh, Uranus, which is what we've got coming up here uh, next week. Let's take a look at a couple of different markets. Uh, the, the CBOE 10-year treasuries, uh, and one of the things we want to understand here today is that we get these big uh, astrological events, in this case, uh, the planet Uranus going into retrograde motion, uh, and they impact the markets, but they impact different markets in different ways. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they get engaged with astro trading is they, they uh, find something that works in one market and assume that every other market is going to respond identically. That's not the case. So we want to show this example uh, with the treasuries here uh, because, again, that zero point is the date of the retrograde station. There tends to be a, a little bit of a decline, some congestion prior to that station. Afterwards, the, the outlook is decidedly bearish. So that's our, our, our model that we went in to, uh, to and did our back testing with and in order to try to find the optimum trade in this market. In this case, it is definitely uh, a short side uh, dynamic that has the greatest appeal for us here. Uh, so the strategy here would be to uh, sell uh, the Treasury short uh, the day before the station on Tuesday, the 23rd of August, and then uh, cover that position on uh, Thursday, uh, September 1st. So, uh, what, uh, seven uh, trading days there, short duration swing trade, with only a 61.5% probability of winning trade. We do want to underscore that because, uh, for me, this is a little bit too risky for, for my taste. I like to see a much higher percentage there. Uh, but again, this looks like the best of the batch in terms of the trading opportunities that are here for this particular market around this particular uh, Uranus uh, uh, station. Uh, the ROI we would expect there is almost 2%, one, one and three quarter percent, something like that. So it's a pretty respectable return for a short term uh, a, a challenge there. However, uh, it is a good bit riskier. We want to pay attention to that probability. Uh, we're not uh, trying to uh, predict certainty here, but to keep you well informed about how much risk you're incurring along the way. Uh, this is oil, and <laughs> oil looks pretty choppy. We're, we're using, as we have in the past, as a surrogate for the entire oil market, uh, the uh, United States Oil uh, ETF fund, uh, trading symbols uh, USO. And again, what we're looking at is the typical performance around the times of these Uranus retrograde stations. We find that this uh, uh, particular ETF does a pretty good job of tracking the market in oil uh, as a whole. And there's so many different variants on it that we, we find this kind of handy to work with. But as you can see, there's generally a decline moving into the time of the Uranus retrograde station. Again, that's at that zero point here. Uh, and we uh, see a, a bit of a trading bottom at that point. A little pullback upwards the next few days. Another decline uh, hitting around, what, 12, 13 days after the uh, exact date of the station. And then a nice move to the upside. That's what caught our attention here. So in this case, uh, as we look at an optimum uh, trading opportunity here, uh, we're looking at waiting uh, a little bit and waiting till the uh, 2nd of September. Uh, to buy a long position in oil uh, and then selling on uh, September the 9th uh, on that Friday, one week exactly uh, uh, duration for that particular trade setup. This is a much more satisfying probability, uh, at least uh, as far as I'm concerned. 68.8% probability of winning trade looks pretty reasonable there for holding something for a week. Average uh, ROI 1.4% uh, on that. Uh, so I, I believe this could be something worth taking a look at. Again, uh, measure this in terms of your own risk tolerance and your own trading style. Uh, but that's what we're looking at there. And we've got one more to take a look at, which is gold. And uh, this is a very interesting kind of setup uh, with gold because what we see is about uh, two weeks prior to the, the station uh, over there between the minus 10, minus 20 mark. Uh, these are calendar days, by the way, not trading days that we're looking at with these charts. Uh, we see a, 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 a oil peaking and starting a period of decline that lasts for about 10 until about 10 days after of the date of the station, which is coming up next Wednesday. Uh, so it's that time frame again that has caught our attention here uh, for a potential uh, setup uh, for a, uh, a positive trading uh, situation here. Uh, and so in this case, uh, we're looking again at holding off until uh, the 1st of September, Thursday the 1st to be exact. 
And uh, this case, we've got uh, what eight trading days or uh, eight uh, calendar days, rather, uh, for, for this uh, uh, position to the long side uh, with gold. Uh, Love the back testing results here. 76.5% catches my attention. If we've got better than three quarters probability, uh, I feel it's it's worth uh, you know, tossing the coins in that direction a little bit to, to give it a try anyway. Uh, especially since we can have, again, for shortly over a week's duration for this trade, an anticipated ROI of over 2%. Uh, which doesn't look too shabby at all. So those are the trades that we're looking at uh, setting up here uh, around the, this particular time. Well, that looks really interesting. Now, Joe, we have a question from one of our listeners, and that is, with the uh, USO in the crude oil, do you use anything like an ETF for gold, or do you use the futures? Uh, we like uh, the, the uh, S&P uh, ETF uh, for that. Uh, GLD is a trading symbol uh, there. Okay, yeah, that's very active. Yes, that that certainly is it's, spot it's, on. It's, you know, a lot, lot of uh, yeah, a lot, lot of trading action there. It's pretty good uh, a mirror of what's going on in, in, in the broader uh, market. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, looks pretty good. Okay, so we've also got some information on Bitcoin. Uh, Yay! Raise your hand if you like Bitcoin. <laughs> I scream, you scream, whatever the whatever yeah. the right rhyme is there. I don't know. Everybody <laughs> keeps screaming when Bitcoin's involved. <laughs> That's anyway. for sure. So here's our trading chart for Bitcoin. And uh, what's going on with this is we've been tracking this for some time now. Uh, these are daily price bars, and we've added planetary price lines to the mix. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've uh, uh, found it very interesting that we can continue to use these eight harmonic price lines. Uh, for Venus and for uh, the transit uh, Neptunian uh, uh, factor uh, uh, as well. So we're looking here at uh, Venus and Kronos. Uh, and so the horizontal purple lines are for Kronos uh, uh, harmonics. And the di more or less diagonal green lines are positions of Venus. And so uh, what we've discovered is these Kronos lines are extraordinarily powerful in defining key support and resistance zones uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, so what we're looking at here is, uh, of course, the big pullback. This chart uh, just goes back to, what is it, uh, February. Uh, and so mm -hmm. uh, uh, starting in, uh, we're not even showing the big high uh, last November. Uh, but this continuing pattern of incremental uh, consolidation and then downturns uh, with Bitcoin. In this stair-step fashion uh, that looks very well defined on this chart, and it's not so obvious when you see the big price swings even on an intraday basis. <laughs> with yeah. it, uh, it doesn't look nearly this orderly, right? But this yeah, is what's fascinating for me, at least, is that there is an order to this. Uh, and so our current price uh, a couple hours ago was 23,342, um, and recently it's traded a little over uh, 20. Well, we're going to take a break here, Tim. We'll be right back with Tim Boss Financial Cycles Weekly. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. We've been chatting about Bitcoin. Um, I have a question, Tim. Usually you have some yeah. really great webinars coming up. Do you anything uh, in the... Uh... We do indeed. We do indeed. Oh, yeah. uh, color me, me just, lucky. Uh, Go right uh, ahead. Uh, well, I just want to make a quick more uh, additional comment about Bitcoin here because we did see this price pullback starting uh, in late May, early June, and then uh, uh, hit a, a, a level of support uh, in June. Uh, dropped all the way back down to the, around the $20,000 uh, range uh, and found support there. And then since mid-July, we've been testing uh, resistance at that 23850 level up to the 24000 We have a quick uh, a forecast here for Bitcoin. Uh, we're looking at a, a continuing move upward into point A, which will be that Uranus station next week, and then a potential pullback again into the Libra Equinox, which will be the 23rd of September. And then we're looking for a pretty aggressive move to the upside, heading into early November with the lunar eclipse on November 8th, uh, followed by point D there, which is the Jupiter direct station uh, on the 23rd of, of uh, uh, November as well. So webinars, we do have a new one coming up and uh, some new products coming out. So join us, uh, uh, sign up at bit.ly slash Tim Larry P. Uh, everything is lowercase there, except for the initials T and L and P are capitalized. It's a case-sensitive uh, uh, URL, uh, but just go ahead and type that into your browser and uh, uh, connect with us there. A little bit of sign-up form that will uh, capture your email address so we can keep you informed on our next free webinar as well as all of the other uh, things that we have offering. We're the global leader in Astro Trading Education, uh, so we provide a variety of training experiences and uh, study products and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, do reach out and connect, and uh, you get special attention by, by virtue of connecting through Larry's program. Well, thank you very much, and we'll have you on again soon, Tim. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless, my son. Stay on the green side of the grass. Thank you, sir. You got it. Thanks, folks. Tim, folks. Tim, folks. Tim Post, Financial Cycles Weekly. Bradenton, Florida. We'll be back tomorrow, folks, with our good friend, none other. Are you ready for this, boys and girls? Jim Bartoleone of Bart's Charts. We'll see.